In our research, we discovered two novel mechanisms which is essential for the regulation of aging and longevity process. So ubiquitination is a central regulatory pathway in the cell that uh, where uh, many proteins are tag or mark with a, a very small protein called ubiquitin and that regulates the activity and, and function of the proteins. So we found that with age, when we age, there's a massive changes in, in the ubiquitination of many proteins and that is a key regulator of the, of the aging process. So the good news is that we are living longer, but that also means that uh, there's a, an increase in the number of people with diseases or, or disability. Uh, diseases like Alzheimer's disease or diabetes, cancer, etc. So uh, our goal, the goal of our lab is to identify mechanisms that can delay the aging process and, and improve the quality of life. So what we did is to uh, use a, a, a very uh, tiny worm called C. elegans that it has been used uh, for many decades for aging research because uh, they have a very short lifespan. So uh, then we wanted to compare uh, uh, very young worms with uh, old worms and see how uh, ubiquitination changed in, in the worms. We uh, perform ubiquitin proteomics to perform a comprehensive analysis of the entire uh, ubiquitinated proteome of how the, the, all the proteins in the cell uh, are changing the ubiquitination status. So with this technique we can identify specifically the sites that are ubiquitinated in each protein and how they change during the aging process. We observed that in general aging causes a loss of, uh, loss of ubiquitination. You can think about the ubiquitination process like decluttering uh, with Marie Kondo. Is it essential or it can just go? So we know that non-essential proteins or damaged proteins are labeled with ubiquitin. These uh, ubiquitinated proteins are recognized and destroyed by proteasome, which is the cell's garbage truck. We show that in the old worms, the, the, the enzymes that remove the ubiquitin from proteins are more active during aging processes, and this leads to the accumulation of the protein. So what really surprised us is that Many of these changes in, 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 in ubiquitination were actually due to a decrease in the ubiquitination levels and that was due to an increase in the activity of the, of the, of the proteins that remove uh, the ubiquitination of, of proteins. So uh, then uh, we found that actually we, if we can inhibit this uh, elevated activity, then we can also extend lifespan. And also the, the most interesting is that we found many targets or many proteins that are less ubiquitinated with age and then they escape the degradation by the protosome so they just accumulate in the, into the, in the cell in different tissues. After analyzing the total proteome level of the ubiquitination changes, we decided to follow up two specific proteins. One of them is intermediate filament IFB2 protein and the other one is EPS8, it's an important signaling pathway regulator. These two proteins are less ubiquitinated during the aging process, which leads to the accumulation of this, uh, these two proteins in specific tissues. We observed that IFB2 proteins specifically uh, accumulate in the intestine, and this accumulation leads to the fail of the digestion process and absorption of the nutrition. On the other hand, we observed that EPS8 protein is uh, specifically accumulated in the brain tissues, in addition to that, the muscle tissues. This changes the muscle integrity and also, uh, also uh, neuron function. And this uh, impact of the accumulation of these proteins leads to the acceleration of the aging process. So I think our work can be very important to, for aging research because we found this novel mechanism uh, between ubiquitination and, and the aging process. And with that, we also found many uh, potential targets that in the future can be uh, modulated to, to try to delay uh, aging and all the consequences of, of the aging process.